Hi, and welcome to an introduction to pull-down assay. The pull-down assay is a molecular technique to determine a protein's interactions with other proteins. It is one of the first steps, or it can be used as a confirmation, of the interaction between two or more proteins. In the following few minutes, I'm going to demonstrate to you how the pull-down assay works in a simple and easily understandable manner. There are, basically, six stages in the pull-down assay method. Let's call them stages one to six. Stage one, identification and isolation of the protein of interest. New proteins may be discovered by chance or by well-planned scientific studies. Let's say the schematic above is our newly discovered protein, our protein of interest. Stage two, tagging the protein of interest. Here, we want to add a tag to our protein or modify the protein in such a way that we can easily isolate it from a mixture with hundreds or thousands of other proteins. This stage is critical to the success of the pull-down assay. We may want to consult experts because if tagging is not done properly, the tag can interfere with the function of our protein and alter its interactions with other proteins. Tagging is done at the gene, i.e. DNA, level. The coding sequence of the respective gene which codes for that protein is modified. GST is one of the most preferred tags for bait protein purification. His tag is also common. Large quantities of our modified protein can be obtained by the transgenic approach. Once we have our protein of interest tagged, we proceed to stage three. For convenience, let's refer to the tagged protein as bait. Proteins that will be trapped by our bait are referred to as prey. Stage three, mixing the bait with other proteins. If we have known proteins in mind and we want to determine their interaction with our bait, we will go ahead and mix those proteins with the bait. If there are no proteins in mind, then we will prepare a cell lysate or a lysate from a tissue or a whole organism, depending on the nature of our study. A lysate is a solution containing all of the soluble content of a cell or tissue. The mixture contains many different proteins. Only some of them can interact with our bait. Usually mixing of bait and lysate is done in a test tube or in a beaker before the mixture is applied to an appropriate column. We can also pass the bait through the column first and then apply the lysate. Let me spend a moment to demonstrate how columns work. Columns are designed to bind specific proteins based on those proteins' properties. Inside the columns, beads are packed that are attached to molecules that are specifically designed to recognize the tag on the protein of interest. Along with the protein of interest, or the bait, its interactors, or prey, that can physically bind to the bait, while other proteins that do not bind the bait will be washed off in step four. There are different kinds, brands, and sizes of columns. The choice is based on the type of study. Two or more kinds of columns can be used in combination, depending on the nature of the bait. Analytical columns are usually small. Industrial columns can be as big as giant tanks. There are several considerations we may have to make at this stage for an effective assay. They include, but are not limited to, A, optimum temperature, B, optimum pH, C, appropriate buffers, and D, appropriate incubation period for the bait and prey to interact. Stage four, washing to remove nonspecific binding proteins. Washing with excess of an appropriate buffer, washing buffer, will remove all other proteins that do not bind to the bait. The buffers can be formulated to allow weakly bound proteins or only strongly bound prey to remain bound to the bait. Stage five, elution of bait prey complex. Now we are going to add a different buffer, elution buffer, to weaken or destroy the interaction between our bait and the column. To weaken bait column interaction, we can manipulate different salt concentrations and pH of the elution buffer. Other methods can also be applied depending on the nature of the tag. Thus, the bait and prey come out of the column. After elution, the bait is still tightly bound to the prey. Stage six, run SDS page to separate the bait from the prey. SDS page destroys protein-protein interactions and separates the proteins based on their sizes. In SDS page, Proteins migrate in a gel, and the rate of migration is dependent on protein size. 
Smaller molecular weight proteins have less difficulty moving through the gel, so they move faster, while higher molecular weight proteins have more difficulty and move more slowly. Therefore, in SDS page, smaller size proteins are found near the bottom of the gel, while larger proteins remain at or near the top of the gel. With the aid of standard protein ladders, a mixture of marker proteins of known sizes, we can predict or estimate the sizes or the molecular weights of the prey proteins. Now that we have our proteins resolved, we can then use mass spectrometry or protein-specific antibodies to identify or confirm the various prey proteins. Things to consider in designing a successful pull-down assay. Number one, selection of column and tag are very important. We have to know enough about the protein of interest to choose an appropriate tag and decide on a location where the protein might fuse to the tag. Different tags might be tried. Two, concentration of bait, prey, and other proteins can impact the results. Therefore, we want to make sure that we have enough sample for the study. Three, some proteins may transiently interact with the bait or may have temporal interactions. It is possible to lose temporary or transient players during the washing process, leaving only the proteins with stable interaction. This can lead to loss of valuable information. Therefore, we may try different incubation periods as well as different buffers to identify these transient or temporal players. Four, some proteins will interact with the bait only in the presence or absence of other molecules ligands, cofactors, etc. In this case, presence or absence of those molecules will greatly influence our results. We want to make sure that all relevant conditions are present for accurate analysis. Great! I hope that you found the information in this video very useful. Thanks for your time.